single Islam. That means you are telling Allah, I don't care. I'm not convinced about what you are saying. That's the meaning of it. And yet, you say, I am Muslim. You don't know what you are talking about. If you are weak, you are not wearing your hijab, that is another issue. May Allah guide you. May Allah give you the strength to wear it. But don't let the shaitan to play with your mind and take you out of the fault of Islam. Or that you are attacking your sisters who are wearing the hijab or wearing the niqab. You will not believe this. In one of the debates I've watched, a sister with niqab talking about Islam, and there is another sister between double quotes. She's telling the other sister, you are embarrassing me by wearing this. Who's embarrassing the other? The one who is completely no hijab is telling this. This is the time when the Prophet ﷺ says, the lowly people will talk. Al-Ruwaybida will talk about matters of the Ummah. I've also seen prime time, another one between double court Muslim. Well, Islam is not like that. Islam is not like that. What Islam is like? My dear sisters, this is Deen. Listen to what Allah says. And learn your deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An Nisa, Surah number 4, Ayah 65. Fala wa rabbika la yu'minuna hatta yuhakimuka fi ma shajara baynahum. Thumma la yajidu fi anfusim haraja mimma qadayt wa yusallimu taslima. By your Lord, Allah is swearing by himself. They can have no real iman, a real faith in their hearts until they make you Muhammad sallallahu alayhi judge in all disputes between them and find in their, in their hearts no resistance against your decision. But accept them with the fullest conviction. We hear and we obey. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also in Surah Al-Ahzab, Surah number 33, I want you to take notes and refer to the ayat and memorize them. Surah number 33, ayah 36. Allah is saying, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمَ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ it is not fitting for a believer, man or woman, a believing man or a believing woman, when a matter has been decided by Allah and his messenger to have any option about their decision. If anyone disobeys Allah and his messenger, he is indeed on a clearly wrong path clear. Allah decided. The Prophet ﷺ said, we say we hear and we obey. Why? Because Allah is the creator. So he is telling me this, I say I hear and obey. My Prophet ﷺ tells me this, my dear sisters, when you read the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, when you read the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, imagine yourself, you are in front of him and he is telling you, will you obey him or disobey? What you will do? Obey or disobey? You will obey him. 
So when you are reading the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, imagine yourself, you are in front of him. So there is no choice for anyone. Having said this, my dear sisters, always you have to keep in mind that anything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us is for our own benefit Allah my dear sisters is not in need of us Wallahi he is not in need of us we are in need of him so all the things that come from Allah are for us and for our own benefit and we are the ones who are going to reap the benefit not Allah Allah asks you to pray the salah Allah is not in need of our salah but who is going to benefit from this salah you and you will enter the Jannah because of that and it will give you the peace in your life and the calmness you need and it will give you the strength to resist the temptations it is you who is going to benefit why should we fast Allah is not in need of our fasting it is for our own benefit ya ayyuhalladhina amanu كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Or you who believe, siyam, fasting has been, has been prescribed, imposed on you as it was prescribed for those before you. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Perhaps that you become muttaqeen. Perhaps that you may achieve taqwa. You may become pious and righteous. So the benefit of the siyam is the taqwa. That you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you lead pious and righteous life. So similarly, the hijab you wear, there are many benefits for you. Because Allah, the all-wise, when He tells us to do something, it is for our own benefits. And there are many benefits for the hijab. I'll just mention, mention a few of them. When you wear your hijab, you feel that you are, first of all, more modest. Covered up. You are not sex object. Anyone can look at you and watch you. Islam respects the woman. The woman in Islam, like a jewel, piece of diamond. No one should touch it. Valuable things always are preserved, right? Go to the museum, anything valuable, you watch it from a distance. Don't touch, it's written. Don't touch. <laughs> Stay away. A woman is more valuable than that in Islam. It's not cheap. But the enemies of Islam are the enemies for, for the woman, as you're going to know. Find out who are your real enemies. Don't be naive. The one who tells you, wow, you're gorgeous. Wow. You're, huh, you know what he wants. And you know what he's after. And you say, oh, thank you. <laughs> he's pulling your leg. He's fooling you. He's your real enemy. He is that man, that is the real enemy. Not the one who tells you, sister, cover up. The one who tells you, cover up, he likes you, he loves you, he wants you to go to the Jannah. 
and you think, oh, you are extremist. <laughs> when you wear, wear your hijab, you don't care about anyone. You don't think the problem nowadays, a woman goes and buy a particular dress and in her mind, how to impress others. That is what she has in mind. Because they programmed her and brainwashed her. The hijab protects you from the <clears throat> fashion industry. You know the fashions, magazines. Every season, a particular dress. The fashion this season, the maxi. The long one. The maxi this season, the micro. And they keep playing with your body. That is what they are doing. I mean the woman in general. The fashion industry is sex oriented. You have to wake up. The designers, they are thinking which part of your body is going to trigger the desire of the man. So this season, you show the man this part through the dress. Are you following? It is a serious matter because they want to make money. And they fool the naive women and they will tell them we'll make you stars. Models. You have a real asset, use it. What they mean? To generate money. And you to exploit you. And exploit your naivety. I'm talking as the women in general, Muslims and non-Muslims. So, find out who's your real enemy. Hijab is baraka. It protects you and your husband. When Islam says to you, cover yourself, he told millions of women to cover themselves. Your husband leaves your house. He leaves his house in the morning. All women are covered. There's no problem. There's no threat. You will still the woman in his life. Because everyone is covered. But if he's go the moment he steps out, he sees all different types of women. They're more beautiful than you. And now, he comes home and all these flashing, all these f the beautiful faces popping up in his head. And he's looking at you and he's imagining. Looking at you and he's imagining. And he's comparing you to them. I read once. This happened actually in Kuwait, to be honest, in the magazine. A woman was telling her friend, in the morning I get up and I found as if someone spray water over me. And this is happening. I don't know what happens. Say, why? What do you do before you go to sleep? So we'll be watching television. She's not a practicing Muslim. And I go to sleep and my husband stays awake watching. And this is what I find in the morning. See, the other one told her, tonight pretend you are asleep. Okay. So what happens, she found that her husband is watching the television stations, beautiful woman coming. Say, Hadi Mara. This is a woman and this is a woman. And she's asleep. So all that went is spitting all the night. He's spitting over her. Why? There are problems. So Allah, the all wise, 